Let's now look at some examples of different types of selection. The first one that we're going to look at is involving distinct objects. Let's look at this example where we have five mangoes, eight oranges and ten apples. Suppose the question asked is, given five mangoes, in how many ways can mangoes be selected? Now the most common answer to this question is 5C5 which is one way or 5C1 which is five ways. But the question here is, in how many ways can mangoes be selected? We haven't specified how many mangoes. And hence, there are two parts to this question. The first part is, how many mangoes? And the second part is, which ones? So when we look at in how many ways can mangoes be selected, we can have zero mangoes being selected. By the way, that is also a way of selection. Not selecting anything is also a way of selection. So zero mangoes can be selected or one mango can be selected or two mangoes can be selected or and in this manner up to five mangoes can be selected. The plus here is representing the or. Now when we say one mango can be selected and if I move on to the second question which is which one it can be any of these five and hence one mango can be selected in 5C1 ways, two mangoes can be selected in 5C2 ways and so on. So the answer to the question given five mangoes in how many ways can mangoes be selected it would be 5C0 plus 5C1 plus 5C2 and so on up to 5C5 and if you find the answer to this question the final value will actually be 2 raised to 5 and hence as a formula we can say 2 raised to n where n is the number of distinct objects here we had 5 mangoes given to us in how many ways can mangoes be selected 32 ways now we take the entire question and say there are 5 mangoes, 8 oranges and 10 apples in how many ways can a fruit be selected in all there are 23 fruits and hence if the question is in how many ways can a fruit be selected the answer would be 2 raised to 23 this would include no fruit being selected as one possibility if the question is slightly modified and you are asked given 5 mangoes, 8 oranges and 10 apples in how many ways can a selection be done so that at least one fruit is selected then the answer would be 2 raised to 23 minus 1 this minus 1 is for that one way of selecting 0 fruit or no fruit on the other hand if the question asked is in how many ways can a selection be done so as to include at least one fruit of each type now what we are trying to find out is zero mangoes zero oranges and zero apples that means selecting none of these is eliminated it is in fact even eliminating the case of any one not being selected we need to select at least one fruit of each type and hence the calculation now would be 2 raised to 5 minus 1 which would mean at least one apple sorry at least one mango is selected multiplied by 2 raised to 8 minus 1 which would ensure that at least one orange is selected multiplied by 2 raised to 10 minus 1 which would ensure that at least one apple is selected. So this is the way we can actually figure out the different ways of selection for distinct objects. Let's look at a similar example. We have already looked at this example that a basket contains 5 mangoes, 8 oranges and 10 apples. The only change this time is that these mangoes are identical the oranges are identical and the apples are identical. So we are saying that a basket contains 5 identical mangoes, 8 identical oranges and 10 identical apples. And now we go back to our question, in how many ways can a fruit be selected? 
If you remember earlier we had looked at two questions. One first question was how many fruits to be selected and the second question was which ones. How many fruits to be selected is still a relevant question because you can have 0 or 1 or 2 right up to 23 because there are 23 fruits in all. But now when we look at this question which one this question is no longer relevant because if they are identical then which one doesn't matter if you select any one of them it doesn't matter they are all identical. So now when we look at the question in how many ways can a fruit be selected the answer would be since these mangoes are identical there are six ways of selecting mangoes and since these oranges are identical there are nine ways of selecting oranges and since these apples are identical there are eleven ways of selecting apples so when we look at the total number of ways of selecting fruits it would be 6 into 9 which is 54 multiplied by 11 which is 594 ways how do we get 6 when there are 5 mangoes you can select 0 mangoes or 1 or 2 right up to 5 so there are 6 possible numbers that you can select from 0 to 5 there are 9 possible numbers from 0 to 8 and 11 possible numbers from 0 to 10. So this would be the answer if the question is in how many ways can a fruit be selected. Now if the question is in how many ways can a selection be done so as to include at least one fruit the answer would be 6 into 9 into 11 minus 1 which would give us 593 ways of selection and finally if the question is in how many ways can a selection be done so as to include at least one fruit of each type now the calculation would be 5 multiplied by 8 multiplied by 10 which would give us 400 ways of selection this is ensuring that at least one mango is selected one orange is selected and one apple is selected so when we look at identical fruits or identical objects and if the question is in how many ways can a selection be done a general formula could be n plus 1 because it could be anything from 0 to n and in how many ways can a selection be done so as to include at least one object general formula could be n ways. Please note these formulae are only used if the given objects are identical. Let's now look at an example for selection involving successive events. So let's look at a pack of 52 cards and suppose we have to draw two cards out of these, this pack of 52 cards and we need to find the probability that both the cards drawn are queens. So if we take this first example where the two cards are drawn at random. If two cards are drawn at random from a pack of 52 cards what is the probability that these two cards are queens? Favorable cases would be 4C2 because there are 4 queens out of which we want 2 divided by total number of cases would be 52C2 out of 52 cards 2 cards are drawn and this would be 4 into 3 upon 52 into 51 which would give us 1 upon 13 into 17. So this is the answer to the question if two cards are drawn at random what is the probability that both are queens. Let's now look at a second question if these two cards are drawn successively one after the other what is the probability that both are queens. Since the cards are drawn successively one after the other we would take it as probability that the first is a queen multiplied by probability that the second is a queen. So what is the probability that the first is a queen? It would be 4 favorable cases divided by 52 total cases multiplied by and now in any question involving successive events it is always to be considered without replacement unless specified. What does this mean? 
the first card that is drawn is kept out and now from the remaining 51 cards we are going to draw a card and what is the chance that that also is a queen we have only three queens left divided by 51 and hence the answer is 1 upon 13 into 1 upon 17 I repeat Whenever we take an example of successive events, it would be without replacement unless clearly mentioned. So let's take that example. If we are doing this whole thing successively with replacement. So if we now say from a pack of 52 cards, if two cards are drawn successively with replacement, what is the probability that both are queens? Very simple. 4 by 52. And since it is put back again, multiplied by 4 by 52. So the answer is 1 upon 13 into 1 upon 13. So when we talk about randomly, we would just take both cards picked at one go. When we talk about successively and nothing is mentioned, it would be successively without replacement. The answer to randomly and successively without replacement would always be the same. And then if we take successively with replacement, we just take it one at a time. But since it is being replaced, you will have probability of first multiplied by probability of second giving you the same value. So this is an example of successive events with and without replacement. Having seen the different types of selection, let's now look at the different types of arrangement. Let's start off with linear arrangement. Suppose we have only three people A, B, C who need to be arranged in a straight line linear fashion. Now if we have N objects which need to be arranged in a linear fashion, then we can always do that in N factorial ways. So if we have three objects, then these can be arranged linearly in three factorial ways which would be six ways now which would be these six ways you would have a b c a c b b a c b c a c a b and c b a so any linear arrangement of n objects can be done in n factorial ways now suppose we want to arrange these three people A, B, C in a circular manner and suppose these are the three seeds available then we can start off with A, B and C but now since it is a circular arrangement and if we just rotate the circle the A, B, C would be the same as B, C, A which would be the same as C, A, B and hence A, B, C B, C, A and C, A, B which were three different ways in linear actually become only one in circular and there is another circular arrangement possible which is A, C, B which is the same as C, B, A and which is the same as B, A, C so what was six different ways in linear has actually got reduced to only two ways in circular so N factorial which was the formula for a linear arrangement gets simplified to n minus 1 factorial as a formula for circular arrangement. So if we have three people to be arranged in a circular fashion, it would be 3 minus 1 which is 2 factorial which is nothing but 2 ways. So instead of these three people, if we had 8 people A, B, C, D and so on, then the number of ways of arranging them in a circular fashion would be 7 factorial ways. Now we take a slight variation to this question. If there are 8 people and they need to be arranged in a circular fashion but we also need to ensure that 2 people which is let's say C and D should always be seated together. Then how would we work that out? What we can do is we consider these 2 people C and D as one single unit. So there is one unit of C and D there are six other entities so in all seven entities to be arranged in a circular fashion seven entities can be arranged in a circular fashion in six factorial ways but the two people C and D can be arranged amongst themselves in two factorial ways and hence the answer would be six factorial into 
2 factorial. So in general, n objects to be arranged in a linear fashion, n factorial ways. n objects to be arranged in a circular fashion, n minus 1 factorial ways. And then we've taken a variation where two people got reduced to one single unit and hence we found that as 6 factorial into 2 factorial. So this is how we can arrange in a linear or a circular fashion. Moving on with this case of arrangements, suppose we have these three alphabets M, O and N and if we want to arrange these three alphabets so as to form three letter words, this can be done in three factorial which would be six ways and these six ways would be M, O, N, M, N, O, O, M, N, O, N, M, N, M, O and N, O, M. So these are the six ways of arranging three alphabets in a linear fashion or forming three letter words using these three alphabets. Now instead of these three alphabets M, O, N, if the three alphabets that we have are M, O and O, and the change that we made is we have two O's so hence we have identical objects we can no longer form these six words or we can no longer arrange these alphabets in three factorial ways we can do them only in three ways which would be these three ways and hence the change now is if we had straight away written our formula as three factorial we are in a way considering these two to be distinct and hence these two would have given us two factorial different ways of arrangement but they are no longer distinct so we divide these total number of ways by two factorial and hence we get our answer as three ways. So if we use this concept and we go ahead and say we want to arrange the alphabets of let's say the word Mississippi. In how many ways can these alphabets be arranged? If we assume that these are all distinct objects or distinct alphabets, we would get that as 11 factorial because there are 11 alphabets here. But we can notice that there are four identical objects in terms of S, so we divide by four factorial. There are four identical objects in terms of the i's, so we divide by another four factorial. And there are two identical objects in terms of p, so we divide by another two factorial ways. So in general, if we have n objects to be arranged, but out of these n, if p are identical of one type, q are identical of another type, then we would take it as n factorial divided by p factorial into q factorial and so on. So this is how we would go about with the arrangement which involves identical objects.